NT History Part 2. Presenting Streets of North Carolina. Many of our city streets are actually named after very important people that were around during the early days of North Tonawanda when it was first being formed. Today, we're going to take a look at six of those streets, and they're going to look really familiar to you. Who knows? One may even be your. Sweeney Street is actually one of the oldest streets in North Tonawanda. And it's named after Colonel John Sweeney. He was one of the very first owners of a lot of land here in North Tonawanda, where he saw potential business in the lumber industry. Webster Street is named after Daniel Webster. Do you remember in my first video when I talked about the white oak on Grand Island and it was bought by the East Boston Timber Company? Well, Daniel was a stakeholder. No, you didn't watch that video? I'm going to need you to go back and watch that video. It was a good one. Anyways, Daniel Webster was a stakeholder in that company. So, Webster Street, which actually was first our main street, check out my photo right there, is named after him. Foundry Street first opened in 1887, and it is named after George Foundry. He was really good friends with Colonel John Sweeney. They were both early landowners, one of the first ones in North Tonawanda. In fact, in the 1890s, so many people made such good money from the lumber success that they built huge houses still there today. Payne Avenue is a street we are all super familiar with. Many of us drive it on a daily basis. It runs from the border of Wheatfield all the way to the border of Tonawanda, meeting and stopping at the Erie Canal. It is named after Colonel Payne a veteran from the War of 1812. And fun fact, and even parents, I bet you don't even know this, Payne is actually still legally called Payne's Avenue. P-A-Y-N-E apostrophe S. Even though in town and the street sign says Payne Avenue. In fact, it was actually called Mohawk Street for a good 10 months before the Board of Trustees decided mm, they were going to stick with Payne. We're going to get a little complicated here. Vandervoort Street is named after William Vandervoort. His sister married a Sweeney. Sweeney's, remember that first street that I talked about? Yeah, they owned a lot of land in North Tonawanda. So William Vandervoort was able to purchase land. He was also able to be a pretty good businessman in, in the early days of North Tonawanda. Last street on our NT street list visit is Oliver Street. This is a complicated one. There's actually three possibilities as to why it got its name. Possibility number one. Oliver Street could be named after Oliver Curtis Thompson, who back in the glory days of the Lumber City time was very well known for his banks and business deals. Or there was a guy named Wallace Oliver who lived on Ward Road. However, he spelled his last name O-L-V-E-R and his descendants of his family just thought that Oliver Street was spelled wrong, but still named after him. The last one is Francis J. Oliver, who was a big investor in the East Boston Timber Company. Nobody knows, though. This is actually a lot of fun to learn a lot of the history of the streets in our city. Streets that I travel almost on the daily, and I didn't even know the meaning behind them. So, let's play a little game. I have my really good handy-dandy history book with me, and it lists a whole lot more streets that I have the history of. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So, drop your street name in the comments below, and maybe I can give you a little history on it. 